Alright, so in this video we're going to look at the general components that make up your typical flight stack from software to hardware. And here is a block diagram of your typical components. So obviously you're going to have your drone and a ground control station and a communication layer that allows the two to communicate with each other. Now if you're not familiar with a ground control station, it is essentially an off-board computer, off-board from the drone, that can in some way communicate with the drone to gather state information like battery voltage, um, drone speed, and can also send commands to the drone to get it to do certain behaviors like landing the drone or other things. And within each of these boxes I have um, abstraction boxes where the higher you go the higher the abstraction level. And by higher abstraction levels, I mean systems that are dependent on lower level systems. So your drone flight control software will not work if you don't have flight control hardware and a drone. So focusing on the drone side now, at the lowest abstraction level, we have the drone hardware or the elementary drone components. These are things like the motors, the props, the frame, the battery, GPS, ESCs. Every component that makes up your basic drone is on this lowest level. And then one level up from this is the flight control hardware level or the autopilot hardware. And essentially all of your basic drone components on the lowest level hook in to your autopilot hardware. So your GPS will hook up to it, your ESCs, your RC input, your telemetry modules. Everything is getting hooked up to essentially a central hardware hub. And this central hub is then used by the abstraction layer above it, which is the flight controller software or the autopilot software. The autopilot software is essentially compiled code that is uploaded to your autopilot hardwares that can then control the drone's basic components. So the software is the thing that is doing the logic to make sure a drone flies level, for example. This lowest level isn't doing that. This software level is doing that. And your two biggest open source projects today for um, autopilot software are Artupilot and PX4. Now, PX4 was a spin-off from Artupilot, and it is typically used for businesses who want to make changes to the mainline branch, but don't want to submit them back to the mainline branch. So PX4 operates under the BSD license, where you don't have to upload your changes. Artupilot uses GPL. But regardless, their fundamental use is the same. And here I have two examples of uh, flight control hardware. Over here I have the Pixhawk, which is pretty popular. And it is a microcontroller. Here you have the Navio 2, which is pretty cool because it sits on a Raspberry Pi, which means that you essentially get to interact with your flight control software with Linux, since your Raspberry Pi is running Linux. So that is what the, your typical drone side stack looks like if you want to have a physical drone. Conversely, you can have a fully functional drone stack by replacing the drone hardware and flight control hardware with a software in the loop instance. Now this sounds all fancy and scary, but it, it is essentially just a simulation of a drone that runs on your computer. So you don't need to build a drone and buy all of the um, components and test the hardware to, to get to coding a drone. You can just spin up a virtual instance of a drone, a simulation that is running Artupilot or PX4, and then you can play with your, your pretend drone on your computer. And the same code that you are using on software in the loop is going to be used on a real drone. So that means that you can practice and test everything you want to and your skills even on a software in the loop 
and those skills will be directly transferable to a real drone. So it's pretty neat. The barrier of entry is very small. So that was the drone side. Now let's go to the communication layer, the thing that is the glue between the drone and the ground control station. So some people like to refer to this as middleware or the communication layer. Um, regardless, it is simply just a standard protocol that the ground control station and the autopilot software can use to communicate with each other. Now that sounds all fancy and stuff, but what does it really mean? So for example, there is a standard command in the Mavlink protocol that is command number 21. And this command tells the drone, it's a land command. It tells the drone it needs to land. So if the ground control station wants the drone to land, it will package and send a message that is sent to the drone that has the command number 21 in it. And then the drone will receive this message. It will see that, oh, we're getting command number 21. And command number 21 is a standard for telling us that we need to land the drone. And then the appropriate code can be called on the drone's firmware or the, the uh, autopilot software to land the drone. So it's just a standard collection of messages. And now to the ground control station. So on the lowest level, you, you always have a computer. And this is a telemetry module. So this USB portion will go on your computer. This UART one will be on the drone side and it will connect to your autopilot hardware. And once they're up and running, they will communicate with each other at typically 915 megahertz in the United States and 433 megahertz overseas. But they'll communicate by using the Mavlink protocol. So this Mavlink thing is everywhere, right? You're starting to, starting to see that a little bit. And then the abstraction layer above the hardware is the software layer. And this is the user interface layer. The predominant ground control station user interfaces are Q ground control, APM planner, and mission planner. The first two are mainly used in Linux. And mission planner is an exclusively Windows piece of software. The thing that all these have in common is they're essentially just graphical user interfaces that utilize the Mavlink protocol. So there might be a button to update a parameter on the drone in all of these uh, GUIs, graphical user interfaces. But all that button is doing under the hood is packaging a Mavlink message, sending it out your ground control station telemetry module, getting received by your drone side telemetry module, and then getting consumed by the autopilot software. So these are just fancy abstractions built on Mavlink. Now, the thing we're going to be focusing on the most in this course is DroneKit. DroneKit is similar in that it is another piece of software that interacts with your drone via Mavlink, but it's different because it's not a GUI. It's just a package that you can import into a Python script and you can control the drone with the Mavlink protocol in, a, in the Python language. So in 50 lines of code, you could tell the drone to take off and go to 20 meters and then land. So it's essentially, with DroneKit, you get to treat ArduPilot or PX4 as an API to controlling a drone. So here's the generic overview again, the generic box overview. And then this is your typical real world setup where you're using an actual drone. And I'm filled in all the blocks here with things that you might use. You have the uh, autopilot hardware, all your drone components, the telemetry modules. All this together might run you anywhere from 500 to 1,000 bucks. And some of us might not really care too much about the hardware end of things and might just want to jump into programming immediately. Or conversely, we might be interested in it, but we don't have the the capital to fund the building of a drone that might cost a thousand dollars. Well, there's good news. There's great news. I'm the Paul Revere here of the of the great news. You can replace your hardware requirements with software in the loop or SIDL. And using drone kit, this provides a very low barrier of entry to starting to program drones. 
It's a low barrier of entry on the drone side because you don't even need to have a drone to start programming. You can just use a software in the loop instance of a drone, a virtual simulated drone. And then there's a low barrier of entry on the, the control side of the drone because with DroneKit, you can just start programming your drone with Python. You don't have to deal with the ugly C++ of ArduPilot and PX4. You can treat this ArduPilot PX4 as an API to DroneKit. So it's a super low barrier of entry. And the coolest thing above all is all of this stuff here is free and open source. So for zero dollars at all, you can start using the all the tools necessary to start programming a drone and you don't even need a drone. And on top of that, these are tools that um, real companies are using on the market today. So for example, uh, Matternet is using ArduPilot and Mavlink. And I'm, I'm guessing DroneKit. Matternet is one of the predominant uh, drone delivery companies nowadays. So it's pretty cool to see or the, the business adoption of these open source tools because it's kind of validating their power. In later videos, we're going to look at these individual blocks in more detail. But for now, I just wanted to provide a high level picture of how all of the various components fit together. And if you ever lose scope of how something fits together later on in the lectures, I hope you refer back to this and see how everything is this cohesive unit because we're going to get a little under the hood with these various subjects and it might be hard to keep track.